The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors. With so many people living longer, the fear of outliving your money becomes a reality for many of us. Will I be a financial burden? Will I outlive my money? How will I be remembered? My name is Neil Himmelstein, president of Main Street Planning Group. Please contact me by visiting MainStreetPlanningGroup.com. That's MainStreetPlanningGroup.com or call 631-647-4694. I will introduce you to strategies that will guarantee you will not outlive your money, that can guarantee you will not be a burden on your loved ones. Through a collaborative approach, Approach, we will uncover solutions that offer tax efficient strategies, lifetime income, and legacy planning. Choice, organization, direction, and education. That is the code we stand behind. Contact MainStreetPlanningGroup.com. That's MainStreetPlanningGroup.com or call 631 647 4694. And listen to me every Friday at 3 p.m. as I host the Main Street Code for Financial Success, right here on 1039 LI News Radio. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. I'm your host, Neil Himmelstein. I'm here every Friday at 3 o'clock. If you miss an episode, you can always go to my website, themainstreetcode.com, or check out my past episodes on Apple and Spotify, where you can catch up to all the latest in the insurance world. When we talk about our code, we talk about choice, organization, direction, and education. And we often talk about choice. Choice means that there's not one direction for everybody. Everybody's plan is individualized to what their needs are and what they want to do. So I think choice is very important. Organization is the roots of everything. You want to make sure that your assets are organized, things are going in the right place, and we help provide direction and education. And We are insurance wholesalers throughout the United States. We deal with lots of attorneys, lots of accountants, bankers, uh, all the different financial resources to help you. And we advocate for you having a team of financial professionals behind you uh, that works for you and your behalf. And if you don't have a team, we're happy to help you put one together because when you're doing your own planning, you want to make sure everything's coordinated. And my clients over the years know, especially my business clients and individual high net worth clients, they know if they have a question about anything, if I don't know the answer, I know who to go to to help them in their needs. And today, very lucky to have one of my great resources with me, uh, Steve Freshenda. Steve Freshenda is a private banker at Webster Bank. And Steve, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you do. Well, good afternoon, Neil. Thank you for having me. Happy Friday. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm actually a business managing director at Webster Bank. Um, I work with small business owners. Uh, typically, we classify small business as anyone doing one to 25 million in, in annual sales and um, you know, really help them with, with all their needs. That's terrific. And I got to tell you, as a small business owner myself and my clients who are small business owners, um, it's very frustrating in this day and age to call 1-800 and help me with something. And it's so important to have somebody like yourself that I can pick up the phone and I have a business problem at the bank and you're all over it. And I know that about you and I know that all my clients that deal with you, it's like, oh my God, thank you. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I've, I've had to call some 1-800 numbers recently and dealing with an automated system and say this, say that, press this, press that is um, beyond frustrating. Uh, so that, you know, that's, I, I don't know if it actually separates me. I think all the, the good bankers out there, and, and there are plenty of them, uh, give their their cell phone number to their clients. So you could text me, you could call me. Um, you know, we, we recognize how important time is to our customers. And, um, you know, you text me, you call me, let me work on what you need while you go back to what's most important to you. See, that's see. It's not that what differentiates you is you. I'm sorry, but um, most people don't realize that they, they could be banking at all kinds of different places. They don't realize there is a Steve Fischenda at their bank. So I have to differ with you there because I've dealt with, you know, with my own personal business, I deal with a couple different banks, uh, and my 
own personal life, I deal with a couple different banks. It's just how things happen over time. But having that key relationship is vital when something goes wrong. If you got hunt and peck, and I had a recent experience. I, I, I just uh, uh, merged with a new company that I purchased in addition to my own company and set up a new account. And I walked into a very big bank and their business person wasn't there. And I go, well, why don't I just, you know, walk across the street? And it, and the teller said, oh, go ahead. You know, you can go across the street. I'm like, really? I mean, you really don't care about me and my business? By the way, I have three other accounts there. And it Amazing. was like, uh, why am I doing this? I, I go, Steve, I, I, I got to do this with you. I can't, like, you know, it was not something that I, it was just happening as a matter of convenience. And I'm like, I can't bank here. And it, this is probably the largest bank in the United States, um, and well, reputable name. I, I don't want to get into it, but I'm like, is that what you care about your clients? And then the same bank, by the way, a couple years ago, I was standing in line because I had to make a transaction. You know, I do a lot of stuff by ATM, like a lot of business. Like, Listen, we don't have time. We're doing wires. We're doing this. We're doing that. I actually stood in a line where the and in this big bank in Patchog. Okay, and I stood in line. This is 10 years ago. And I had a woman who came from behind the desk who came to me in line. You know, you can use the ATM if you want. I go, well, what are you here for? So if you have a business and you don't have a personal banker, you give Steve a call, right? No, absolutely. Um, I, I couldn't agree more. Convenience is at the top of everyone's must-have list nowadays. And, you know, if we're being honest, a lot of banks have... Um, it's very similar capabilities. Uh, what separa separates us is, uh, you know, making sure that you're using those capabilities to to the you know your greatest advantage. So knowing how to operate in the most efficient manner is is you know what we're here to to make sure you're doing and and you're not wasting time you know sitting in line or or on the phone when you should be doing something that's you right. know, obviously more important. Absolutely. To you. Now Webster Bank um, last year. Uh, we talked a lot about uh, well, what happened with banks, because let's face it, we had some big banks right here in New York that ran into a, a, a mini, uh, not even a mini crisis, a real crisis. Yeah, certainly. And people don't understand with this rising interest rates and banks having such a large commitment to low, you know, lengthy mortgages at, at a much lower rate, what a crunch that caused. Uh, but Webster Bank... Uh, not not only didn't have a wrinkle, they, you know, they they still thrived. I mean, so just tell me a little bit about that and where Webster Bank positioning was. And listen, I want to feel secure that my bank, yeah, absolutely, is there for me. My money is safe. So tell me about that a little bit. And yeah, so so Webster Bank is a is a regional bank, right? And and some regional banks. Uh, or you know, just in general, regional banks had a, a little bit of a black eye with with some of um, what went on with Signature Bank and and um, a few others. Uh, Webster is very well diversified. We have a very strong consumer bank, very strong commercial bank. We also have an HSA bank. Um, so our, our balance sheet is very strong. And and um, what's a, what's an HSA bank? So a health savings account. Um, okay. We, we own the largest uh, HSA bank in the country. So basically what that provides uh, Webster is uh, low cost deposits all covered under um, uh, FDIC. I, I think probably the average size of those accounts are you know four or five thousand dollars and mm -hmm. there's you know millions of them. So it just provides a lot of liquidity which which strengthens their balance sheet in, in totality. Nice. Very good. And, you know, we could go into health savings accounts because I, I know quite a bit about them from the, uh, but I didn't know that you guys were a health savings account bank. That's a unique niche and that's why we talk, you know, you, you learn things. So it's a great thing. So um, having the availability when you're doing financial planning of having that bank or is that thing that people don't think about? Having that bank relationship could help you with getting a mortgage. What kind of different services do you do as a personal banker? Yeah, so so I think there's really three main areas where where we win um, new clients and, and we really strengthen our existing relationships. 
Um, you know, one is is on the the deposit side, which is is rate. So customers that have a surplus of of funds that may be saving for a building purchase or a large equipment purchase, um, or or some other large capital expenditure, can earn some really strong interest on on those funds. Um, then with lending, uh, we have a great lending platform for deals up to five hundred thousand, and then also over five hundred thousand, and then treasury services which is a wide array of sending wires, fraud mitigation, um, sending um, ETF funds, um, and the like. Well, that's great. So, And how can people get a hold of you, Steve, if they want to reach out to you? Uh, my cell phone, I give it to everyone, 631-681-0493. 631-681-0493. Fantastic. And if you need to get a hold of me, this is Neil Himmelstein. I'm at 631 631- 647-4694 we're running out of time we're going to go for a quick break and we'll be right back welcome back to the main street code for financial success i'm your host neil himmelstein and today we have our, our special guest steve freshenda steve freshenda is a manager uh, and a private banker for webster bank and before the break, he was talking about some of the different services his bank provides and he provides to his personal clients. And I, if you're a small business and you don't have a banking relationship, Steve is at the top of my list of somebody I would recommend for you to call if you have banking needs or you have business needs, rather than calling that 800 number and frustrating yourself and wasting half a day, like sometimes we all have to do, whether we're doing banking or dealing with the town or dealing with insurance companies, uh, you want to have that person and that connection. And one of the unique things that Webster Bank and they do is something with fraud mitigation, and fraud is is a huge deal. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Because that's a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. So unfortunately, fraud is is extremely prevalent and, and continuing to grow, and it, it's something that you see or hear about all the time. Um, probably one of the... the most common types of fraud is, is check fraud nowadays. Um, you know, you don't potentially realize it, but when you send a check or, or hand a check to somebody, really now you mail a check, um, you know, you have your account number, the routing number, your information, your um, check number, the amount, your signature, all this uh, sensitive information is on an item that you put into the mail. And if somebody just gets a hold of it, they have the potential to, um, you know, execute uh, a you know fraud, which will negatively impact you uh, or one of your customers, which is is what we want to avoid. So there's a few different uh, ways that that banks can approach it. Um, there's what's called positive pay or reverse positive pay, which which is a, a great fraud mitigation tool uh, where you're going to be sending in a list of your checks that you're sending out to the bank and they stay on file and as those checks are presented by who you gave them to, uh, as long as it's on that list, then it goes through. Um, if it's not on that list, you get an exception and you have to you know, manually approve or, or decline that check. Um, what we see happening quite a bit is mail being intercepted. So people stealing from people's mailboxes, from public mailboxes and then whitewashing those checks and depositing them in an illicit account that is just set up to defraud people. Wow, that's, that's huge. Uh, and, and you know, I attended a seminar you gave, I, I, I think you gave it, or you were part of the seminar, and, you know, I'm, I'm lucky because in the past uh, I sent out a lot of checks, business checks and personal checks, and I started using... Uh, bill pay services and online things and uh, I do it for accounting as well and again uh, as a small business who's writing a lot of commission checks out to other agents and this and that um, I decided to go fully electronic and plus my handwriting stinks to be candid with you and at the end of the year counting up the checks and making sure everything going over with everything with my accountant um, I find it's much easier to have an electronic file of everything and it's much cleaner uh, of course there's no system that's a hundred percent perfect and uh, having a son that works in fraud himself he could tell you as as quickly as you solve a problem somebody else is trying to erase it 
but it's great that you have a bank that's taking such positive action as what do they call that positive pay positive pay it's, it's positive action for positive pay and i think that's a fantastic thing and that many banks don't care about uh as long as it doesn't hurt their bottom line they don't show that care for the client and the, and the customer and i think that's vital that's why you want that banking relationship and that's that's a huge example of why we we do that and i think that's great um so let's say you have a client and they need to do you know they want to buy a building and they're one of your regular businesses and take us through the steps on on how you would approach that yeah so i mean Every every uh, scenario is, is a little bit different and, and unique. Um, but say I have a customer who's currently renting space. Uh, let's say they're a, a manufacturer, um, for argument's sake. Um, they're renting space, say 5,000 square feet. They're looking for um, a building that they can grow equity in. And, and you know, it, it makes perfect long-term business sense. Um, you know, we would start looking. We'd kind of walk through a pre-approval. When you're renting... That is cash flow that's available. You're, you're essentially swapping rent for ownership. Um, it'll be an owner-occupied property where the the business that is occupying the space, you know, owns the space as well. Um, so you know, banks tend to to love that type of business. And um, you know, looking through financials when when you're renting, if you're paying say five thousand dollars a month for rent, once that lease is up, that five thousand is now available to pay for. A commercial mortgage. Um, so, if you're a profitable business and you're paying rent, and then you're you're looking for that scenario, um, that's usually a, a pretty easy deal to get done, provided you can find the space. I know, um, yeah, right. That's one of the, the challenging things right. at, at this time. But you know, it's nice to have that hand in aiding you and evaluating what you can and can't do, and then helping you secure that loan on a favorable rate, and you know. Having the facility of having your own banker helps you do all those things. Absolutely. So that's that's one of the things. When I'm working with my clients, I'm trying to meet quarterly, and I'm I'm trying to learn about their future plans. So you know that's one of the most common things we'll talk about. What's your plans two years from now, three years from now? If it is buying uh, a building or buying a piece of equipment, we work with the attorneys, the CPAs, their insurance professionals like yourself, and you know set them up so they're in the best possible position to execute on on their plans when the time comes great i wanted to talk about one other thing on the personal side i i know that you set up a charitable foundation in honor of your son and you're going to have a big golf outing next week would you just spend five minutes going through that or it's actually really closer to two minutes <laughs> yeah two minutes is fine this way i um well, I guess I'm not on, on TV, so I don't have to worry about crying on TV. But uh, yeah, so my my wife and I um, unfortunately lost our son in a, a car accident coming up on uh, three years ago. Um, was an unbelievable boy, and and you know we miss him to death. Um, it, in a way to kind of memorialize him and, and carry on his memory, and at the same time do some good things for our community, we created uh, Harrison's Trail. His name was was Harrison Cole for Senda, so we created Harrison's Trail. Um, you know, kind of a, a play on words because his favorite thing to do was to walk and be in nature and, and walk the different various trails on, on Long Island. Um, so we had our first event last year, which was um, greatly successful. Uh, we raised around $25,000. This year, we're having our second event on July 22nd, same place, uh, Wind Watch Country Club. Uh, golf and country club and we're having a, a golf outing during the day dinner at night uh the dinner is like any other um i hope there's going to be dancing after dinner <laughs> there is going to be dancing I, i've been asked uh to make sure you save a dance for oh. at least three different people oh my god so um don't tell my wife no, i'm kidding <laughs> so uh yeah we um we have a dj uh we have great unbelievable prizes and um, you know we have about an hour and a half, an hour and a half of, of dancing, which is more for the the dinner guests than the the golfers that um, you know we're out sweating well, that's, uh, that's, all day long. That's why I can do that. I don't play golf, so yeah. it's all good. So, um, and what does that charity go towards? That's that's the main thing. Yeah, absolutely. We we do a, a lot of great things. Um, 
we have a, a scholarship in the Sachem Central School District, which is where our kids go. Um, we gave out our second and third scholarship this year. Um, our main uh, beneficiary this year is a, a nonprofit called Palomine, which is an unbelievable nonprofit started by Lisa Gaddy uh, back in 1995. They provide therapeutic horseback riding programs for individuals with disabilities and other vulnerable populations. Um, in addition to that, we support many, um, many local charities um, in, in various ways. Um, anything we do to help the That's community. That's terrific. Great people. Great business person, great friend, Steve Freshenda. How do they get a hold of you again, Steve? Uh, 631 681 You can find some additional information about Harrison's Trail at harrisonstrail.org. Fantastic. And this is Neil Himmelstein. Once again, the best way to get a hold of me is 631 647 4694 or visit me at themainstreetcode.com. Have a terrific weekend, everybody. The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its